Hey guys, here's another step for the movie poster series. A movie poster is your first line of attack when getting people to know about your film. Unlike a movie trailer, you can put your poster in as many places as you want. The idea behind a movie poster is to get people to want to see your film. You should be thinking about that fact throughout your design ideas. As you begin to sketch out or visualize your design, you want to think about the genre of your film. This seems like a no-brainer, but it's really important. Everything you do with the poster will be dependent upon the genre. Next, you need to determine the mood of the poster within its genre. For example, a horror movie could be a slasher horror or a thriller horror. The difference being is the slasher has a lot of violence and the thriller would have less violence. You may or may not want to depict the mood of the film by portraying that. Now you want to decide which of the cast will be in the poster. This can range from none, like this poster, to a full ensemble like this one. It all depends on the movie, but generally it is a good idea to show who is starring in your movie, especially if it is someone an audience will recognize. Let's analyze a famous poster like this one to get an idea of how to put one together. The Star Wars posters are staples of traditional classic movie posters that feature the lead cast along with a few other elements that are important to the movie. In this case, we are looking at Star Wars Episode 1. Not the best movie in my opinion, but a very cool poster. First, the background is black space. This is to make the more colorful elements stand out and to imply that the movie is in space. Secondly, there is a large use of bright light. As you can see, the two suns of Tatooine shine brightly between all the characters. The shine and flare of the suns creates a sense of fantasy, imagination, and grandeur. Put simply, it makes it look like a really big deal. The characters spread throughout the poster are shown in different ways to convey their importance to the story. Anakin Skywalker is the little boy in the center. He is the focus of the film, so you put him in the middle. The eyes will always focus on the middle of the poster. Above and to his right, or to the poster's left, is a big headshot of Qui-Gon Jinn played by Liam Neeson. Two reasons for this. He was the mentor for both Anakin and Obi-Wan Kenobi. He led on the plot more than anybody in the movie. He served as the emotional core of the story. Either that or he was the top build of the cast, meaning he was paid the most. This is unlikely, but there are plenty of situations where the top build actor gets featured on the poster more than anyone else. Usually it's the main character, so it works out fine. To the right of Anakin is Queen Amidala. Her unique appearance already creates interest. Where is she from? What is her significance to the story? She is the only woman on the poster, so it can be assumed that she might be the romantic interest. To the lower right are Obi-Wan and Jar Jar Binks. Obi-Wan is shown holding his lightsaber. This is to let the audience know two things. What kind of character Obi-Wan is in this movie, young and adventurous, and the lightsaber itself, to remind people that those awesome lightsabers will be seen in the movie. Even the way Obi-Wan holds the lightsaber denotes a certain mood. That's the thing about posters and movies. Every element in the image needs to be thought out beforehand. Jar Jar is smaller, indicating a more supportive role, but his odd look and goofy smile implicate that he is the humorous character. To Anakin's left are the Naboo ship, Queen Amidala's transport, and R2-D2 and C-3PO. Notice that C-3PO has none of his gold plating. No plating at all. This tells us something about the movie. Perhaps he wasn't done being built? I mean, everyone knows the answer now, but few knew for sure before the movie came out. This adds to the sense of wonder. This makes you want to see the movie. The ship next to the droids accentuates the science fantasy nature of the film. It looks different than anything any of the previous Star Wars have seen. The ship is sleek, beautiful, and streamlined. Very little in the previous films had designs like this, implying that we will see a new vision of Star Wars with new ships, environments, etc. All things the audience will look forward to. Finally, a bright red and black face with menacing orange eyes covers nearly the entire background of the poster. This is the villain of the movie Darth Maul. The crimson red colors and the expression on his face imply anger. The size of his face on the poster implies how big of a threat he is. The fact that you can't see all of his face and the fact that he's behind everyone implies a sense of mystery, hence the name of the movie The Phantom Menace. Now that's the design of the characters and setting. One thing to note is that this poster is painted by Drew Struzan. Unless you are as skilled as painting as this guy, you won't be doing what he did, but you can imply very similar things in Photoshop. Now that you get the idea of a poster's basic design, you need to add the titles, credits, and the logline. Everything but the logline is obvious, but the purpose of the logline is to deliver in one or two sentences a compelling phrase that tells you a little bit about the movie. In this case, the logline is, every saga has a beginning. 
This implies that the space opera of Star Wars is beginning. It can be interpreted in all kinds of ways, but that's the main idea. At the bottom is the title of the movie. Notice how Episode 1 is bigger than The Phantom Menace, even Star Wars. This was done on purpose. The original movies didn't do this due to the fact that the audience didn't know that there were parts 1, 2, or 3 until later, and it was better advertising to use its original title. Now, due to the anticipation of the new movies, the episode number is front and center and far more important. Below that are credits. Acting credits are always first and are always named by top build or highest paid from left to right. In this case, I was right about Liam Neeson being paid the most. Below actors are key crew. Visual effects, director, photography, editor, etc. are almost always listed and the writer-director of the movie, or just director, is always named last. Finally, below that are contributing companies and the website. You got all that? It is quite a bit. Before you even get started in Photoshop with your poster, you need to consider all these elements. I will go through even more elements of the poster as I teach each class, but these are the most important. Without this knowledge, creating a compelling poster will be more difficult and less people will want to see your movie. For the next video, I dive right into Photoshop and create a movie poster file. Just so you know, I won't be covering taking photographs for the poster. This is all strictly Photoshop. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about this series or Photoshop, you can send an email to requests at mahalo.com. Please be sure to also rate, comment, and subscribe below.